Hello, this is Jason Aylon from Let Live, and you're watching Rock Forever Magazine. Hey guys, it's Tori from Rock Forever Magazine, and I am here right now with Jason from Let Live. Hi, Tori. How are you doing today? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing well. It's a little warm, but it's 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 good. It's a nice day. At least you have this hat to Absolutely. keep it shaded in this heat. Pragmatic and stylish. There you have it. <laughs> But it is so exciting to be here with you today. The Black is Beautiful is such an insane album. Everybody go check that out. That's why we're doing this interview, so you could go check out that album. But you really are a band that has a lot to say through your music, through all of your lyrics. So if you had to come up with a mission statement overall of what you want to accomplish through your music, what would that mission statement be? Um, the mission statement through the music would, would simply just be um, just for people to feel something, like eliciting um, an emotion, also provoking emotions, uh, whether yeah. that be like, uh, a good, bad, <laughs> uh, good, bad, um, joyful, sort of despair, whatever, whatever you want to feel. Mm -hmm. Like we want to be the forum for that if we can. I mean, I remember watching you guys play, and I literally saw people jumping over that barricade, yeah. going crazy. So they were definitely yeah. feeling something. Yeah, yeah. That is for sure. <laughs> and one thing you guys touch on a lot in your music through your lyrics are uh, society and just people and how people live. I know you said uh, in your rock sound entry, you have to be the change you want to see. Yeah. So in regards to the topics that you guys think about overall. What are you doing through your music or in your life to be that change? Um, honestly, I'm, I'm just trying to be as active as I can. I mean, with the band, of course, like that's, I guess, my primary sort of my primary um, activity in which I'm able to represent and exhibit things that I'm trying to, to do and mm -hmm. trying to change. But outside of the band also, like I, I mean, this may sound like cliched or as if I'm trying to uh, get a pat on the back, which I'm not at all. But um, just like volunteer work, uh, working, mm -hmm. I still uh, go home and work with kids. Or um, I also like do th uh, charities at home and things like that. But it's it's not it's not anything I'm doing because I want people to say good job. Mm -hmm. I'm honestly just doing because I think it's I I have to like because those are the charities and those are the programs that helped raise me as a kid. So now yeah. I'm just trying to awesome. pay it forward. And it's nice because here at Warp Tour there are a lot of charities Absolutely. here. So have you been doing anything with anyone on Warp Tour? Yeah, we've done a, um, a lot of signings and we've um, donated a lot of the money from CD sales on this tour to different organizations on the tour. That's awesome. Um, and we've tried to couple ourselves with things that we bring brands and um, you know, uh, companies that we align ourselves with and ideologically as well, so yeah. And you released a music video for Banshee not so yeah. long ago. I love that music video. Um, what inspired the concept for that and how does it relate back to the theme of the song? Um, we all went through a few different treatments and we sent them out. Like we all sat down and one or two of us would write a long treatment and then another one would edit it and then another person in the band would edit it and give ideas and by the end we had like uh, sort of like a, a Frankenstein of everyone's ideas. Um, so Frankenstein. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, what we did is we, we presented that to I believe like six or seven different um, directors, mm -hmm. and then they presented us their rendition of what it is they felt you know mm -hmm. was the idea and um, the theme. And then after uh, we decided to go like stylistically and also like with the um, the idea and his take on it. Uh, our mm -hmm. friend Danell did the video, and ultimately uh, it's just supposed to represent. Um, in, even at the end of the video, I know there's like a crass moment with like the guy being shot and like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, we're just trying to really just elucidate the the harsh reality that can be um, in an in industry that at once was entertaining as an art form and now it's just been monetized, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's good that you're bringing awareness to that and with a band like you guys, you're definitely shaping entertainment, yeah, I believe, right. and especially lots of talk about you guys on this tour, oh, so cool. it's awesome. <laughs> And what was the inspiration behind the song Dreamer's Disease off of Black's Beautiful? Um, for, for me, that was um, <clears throat> uh, my, I guess my perception on my, not my, my, my romantic relationships as well as platonic and everything in between. Mm -hmm. um, sort of what I was beginning to feel uh, as a person uh, becoming, sorry, <laughs> um, I say it in the song like an amorous man with a prostitute's like sense of commitment. Yeah. Um, it, it was again me trying to be candid about my issues with trust and commitment mm -hmm. and then them only being enhanced and amplified with my uh, career choice, my lifestyle. Um, and through the years, I, I've always remained hopeful. You know, I've always remained hopeful and I've always believed that I will find something that that sort of fulfills me. But um, it, I, there's been a lot of situations in my life where I've been shown as reasons why I, I, I don't fully find myself uh, investing in other people. and. Mm -hmm. 
um, I guess it was my way of shedding that skin and trying to I'm trying to get past that and get yeah. better at it. I, yeah, I feel like I, I read your rock sound interview, obviously. I mentioned that before, but I learned a lot about how you grew up, you yeah. know? So how did you get to this point now where you've become so hopeful, you know? Because I feel like some people could just become so negative yeah, about everything yeah. around them. Um, you know, I feel like, I feel as, you guys be good, have a good day. Um, I feel like, I guess, humorously, or like, sort of like a ironic sense of humor with all of it, because I personally was shown that with everything, all the adversity and all the trial and tribulation that, that I've ex that people experience, in the end, it only like it only um, exponentially sort of uh, shows how, how much better the joys can be. That's that's how I see it. Because anything that I've experienced that I've been been grateful for, I've been immensely, tremendously grateful for because I've I've seen the polar opposite or like the diametric side of it. And mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I guess it's. I also think that part of it, I just have this, if I may, this is a tangent. No, go right ahead. <laughs> I, I met, this, I met this, this woman on this tour, and I met her because I grabbed her from the, the, the like side viewing area, and because they were telling, at the end of the songs, they tell them to leave, and oh. so I picked her up and put her on stage oh, wow. at the end of our set. And we ended up talking later that night because she was a friend of a friend, so some sort of kismet connection. And then after that, um, we started having these like enlightened conversations. Last night we talked about nature versus nurture, mm -hmm. and so like my mind has been spinning and racing on that. Her name's Julia, by the way. Julia, if you if you see this, you're fantastic. Thank you for these conversations. And I think that my my nature, coupled with the way I've been nurtured, both good mm -hmm. and bad, has like sort of uh, um, prompted me and guided me in, on in, in an avenue where I just want to believe that things can be okay and can be better because I've seen them be better and I've seen them be be horrible. Yeah. And uh, I think there is no dark without the light. I'm sorry about the cliches, but I mean it. Like, no, honestly, <laughs> it is so interesting to hear you talk about all of this. It really is. That's why people love your music so much, because we get to hear your perspective of everything, <laughs> really. And you guys do have very intense personal songs. And, you know, there, there's so many people in the music industry today who write these cliche, just oh, yeah. generic pop songs. So what is it for you that motivates you to write the kind of songs that you do? Um, I feel like it's the only way that I can remain like it's it's the most human I've ever felt is being able to to write these songs and perform them and even if I'm not performing in front of anyone it's just me being able to to play them in my own room or in, in the in the van or bus or wherever um, I also feel as though now a long time ago like music for me was like yo I'm gonna write these songs because I want to be an artist like mm -hmm. I want to be an artist and yeah. and now I kind of want to dispel or like abandon that idea and just I want to be a person who's sharing with other people as opposed to like just being this like individual who is esoteric and, and, and untouchable like that's not what I want I just I think that music is transcendental it's universal and it's the only language that everyone speaks so that's kind of I just want to be as honest as I can when I'm doing it it's interesting how you start doing music more for yourself and it totally. turns out to be a completely different thing totally. yeah interesting. yeah I, I feel as though I mean I think there's a lot of people that do just continue to do it for themselves and self-aggrandize and there's a lot of self-importance and that's fine you know if that's your thing that's your thing but uh, I think it's bullshit yeah. so. I agreed on that <laughs> and I know it must be hard to choose but is there a favorite lyric you've ever written is there one in ever um, I know this that's is a hard good. question I guess right now like right now in this moment it would be I wrote um, it's it's again like a pretty like brash lyric it's just a uh, fuck making love I'd rather make history that's one that's like really resonated with me yeah. um, in this time in my life at least mm -hmm. right now so. I feel like that's a song that a lot of people really love the lyrics to that song I've been hearing it everywhere yeah, so cool. yeah and what is the meaning behind the album artwork for the black is beautiful the first time I saw that I was like whoa yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is happening here yeah we um we honestly we all got together in, in our first 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 like uh, decision and discussion uh, topic was we wanted to be naked on our album because we, we, we were like you know we want to um, we want to really it, it, not shock but like provoke some sort of thought like yeah. make people think about something also Why don't they have clothes on yeah, yeah yeah and I guess like ultimately this is again that like sort of that that avant-garde or that like weird artsy bullshit part of our of ourselves is like the album, the whole white flags, the the, the nudity, the the, the shocking um, nature of all of it, is simply because 
we feel as though we feel like this world this that we're living in not only musically but uh, societally is so sterilized and it's so homogenized and it's like the, the prosaic nature of everything and, and is not benefiting anyone except for a very very slim top tier of our of our our society um, and uh, uh, and I feel like there's a way to say something without actually even saying it yet, mm -hmm. you know, without even hearing the music. And, and that's why we have these white American flags and a person tied up and, bubble, and, and in it. If I may, there's a band called Remembering Never that wrote an album a while ago, and, and no offense to them at all, I just never listened to them because I was not into that world really but they did an album cover that was similar and we just found out about it and, oh, wow. and they're like really upset about it and I, I'm sorry we had honestly no idea at all I never ever once saw it in my life never yeah. even heard a, a tune of their music uh -huh. but uh, I do apologize but um, our I guess our uh, reasoning behind it I would assume is a little different than theirs I, I don't know I, I didn't really ask them their mission statement or their uh, their platform but uh, we do apologize for that but honestly we had no idea and we and we we meant no disrespect so sorry about that guys interesting coincidence yeah, there <laughs> honestly I've, I've never I couldn't believe it and I felt bad but at the same time the the idea behind our album cover is there's a strength in there that we wanted and we wanted to, to say and put out there with, and we didn't, we never saw theirs, so. Hey, you guys had the right motives, yeah, so yeah. it's all good, right? Sorry, and I saw you guys play back in January on your headlining tour, and you said this on stage, and literally since then I was like, this is gonna be an interview question. Yeah. When I interview Let Live, yeah. you said on stage, um, Let Live's not a band, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. What is the Let Live lifestyle? <laughs> it's uh, honestly just um, allowing yourself to exist amongst others, and <laughs> And vice versa, making sure that the flip side is just as uh, just as, as prominent. Uh, you know, you you want to make sure that you're you're doing things that that will edify and the, and benefit yourself. But you have to make sure that there's others there that are allow that you're allowing to do do them. You know, like do you whilst do, you know letting others do them. And uh, you know, I guess it's just um, it's just being accepting, it's being understanding, and. Uh, and, and being being the person, being a person, just a human being, really. You know, I was really waiting for you to say, stand up, stand yeah, up, yeah. For stand that up. Too, that's you it, know? make sure to stand up. Stand up, there you have it. And uh, being a band with so much to say and, you know, lots of opinions, comes some misconceptions. So what do you think is the biggest misconception about the band? Um, that we have one opinion. That, that, we, that we're so steadfast or, you Definitely know, like, you know, yeah, <laughs> like that we're just like subscribed to one thing and then that's it. And it's no, almost like this uh, very linear thing. It's, it's not that at all. It's actually very a very subjective nature, uh, the whole idea of Let Live and, and all, everything that we discussed because everything I've said in this last album in The Black's Beautiful may in fact change for me in a few years because I might become another person which I hope I do become another person I hope that the, the idea is evolution and progress so hopefully I do become someone different that uh, looks back and, and, and remembers those times that, that I've experienced and remembers those things and those that I've felt and said but now can view them differently I would hope yeah. so currently how are you feeling about fake history has that changed for you at all yeah yeah I, when I when I my, my inclusion my part of fake history I was writing like, as an observer, like a lot of third person, um, the way that I saw things and the way that I felt about things, but never really considering myself, um, never integrating myself in those things. And now on The Black is Beautiful, I've definitely put myself in those problems and understood that if I'm not a part of the answer, then I'm very well could be a part of the problem that I'm lamenting and that I'm so contemptible towards. So um, it's not self-deprecating. It's just uh, it's just understanding that I need to really, really put a serious effort towards the things I want to change and in myself first. Like, I have a lot of indiscretion, a lot of um, issues, if you will, that I, I, I must... Uh, conquer if I'm gonna become the person the man that I want to be for other people so and the last question here we can't end this interview without talking about your live show that's what everybody's talking about your live show so is anything premeditated on stage I literally I'm thinking how in the world does he do this every day <laughs> Nah, I just think if anything like the most premeditated thing we have as a band is our set list <laughs> um, everything else is very visceral or just sort of um, you know, by by way of whatever we're feeling or whatever we're we're thinking at the time, because um, it could all change every single day. It's it's a different feeling, and 
Um, it's all very powerful, sure, but it's all very uh, selective sort of uh, emotions that we allow ourselves to feel at certain times. So, nah, no pre. And if it was premeditated, I feel like I would fuck it up anyway. I would like think too hard and trip on a sh on my shoe or on myself or say the wrong thing. So. But I think that's what's so good is that it's candid. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, you don't know what to expect. Yeah, we're trying. And so, what happens if there's a day where you're a little more mellow? Don't feel like ah, yeah, all yeah. over the stage. Um, luckily, the music usually uh, sort of um, lets me feel that, you know, it kind of, um, yeah. it uh, encourages me to act in a way that I don't typically, like right now, I'm not like thrashing around, I haven't broken anything. Or, yeah, we're in a small room. Yeah, That's a good yeah, idea. yeah, so I mean, it's usually just the music that's uh, the catalyst for such, such activity, but if in fact one day I did feel like, you know, a little more mellow and not act in a certain way, I would, I would hope that people would understand that that's how I feel and like maybe we can explore that realm together because that's again like another night idea for that is sharing the way you feel with people so, yeah all right well thank you so much well, for hanging out so it was much. great talking to you and everybody watching make sure you check out the black is beautiful incredible album and while you're at it subscribe to our channel for more videos and i'll see you next time bye